So now we make an example where we want to minimize the function in disjunctive form and we're going to have four variables here. So the onset of this function is given by 0, 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13 and 15. We do not have a don't care set so the rest of the inputs will correspond to our offset. In this minimization example I'm going to make two shortcuts compared to what we did before. The first shortcut is that I will not explicitly write the truth table of the function but I will instead immediately put these values into the Carnot map. So remember that the dimensions in the Carnot map are gray coded while we put NBCD coded values in the, code, in the Carnot map. So let us just try to recall what values we put where. So here we put the zero value 1, 2 and 3 and then we put here 4, here 5, here 6 and here 7 and here we put 8, 9, 10 and 11 and then in this row we put 12, 13, 14 and 15. So if we now add our onset to the Carnot map, we will have a 1 in the position 0, in the position 4, 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13 and 15. So these are the onset and the ones in our Carnot map and then the rest of them will be zeros. So we add zeros to the other positions in our Carnot map. Now let me just clean up the table by removing our numbers. Now since you want to write this in the disjunctive form we want to make as large rectangular blocks as possible for all our ones in the function. So if we start with our first one the largest rectangular block we can find is this one which include the ones also in the bottom but we can also find a rectangular block here because both of these are as large as possible. They both include two ones. Continuing to the next one, the largest rectangular block we can find here is this rectangular block and there is no other rectangular blocks that we have not already used for this one. Continuing to the next one, the largest rectangular block is well first the one we just made and then we also have this rectangular block which is as large as possible for this one and then for the next one in our table we find the largest rectangular block containing these four ones it will also be the largest rectangular block for this one so going to the last row of our table we can find here the largest rectangular block containing these four ones here and for the rest of the ones in our Carnot map, we will not be able to find any larger rectangular block than the rectangular block that we have already made. So let us, as before, name these blocks just for simplicity and trying to follow what we're doing here. So we call this A, we call this one B, we call this one C, we call this one D, and then the large block here we call E and then this block here we will call F. So we have now named all the rectangular blocks which is all our prime implicants of our function. So now let us write our prime implicants. So we start with the prime implicant that we named A. So this will be the cube function where we have the cube B because x1 can take either 0 or 1 and then we have 0 because x2 can take 0 x3 and x4 can also only take 0 for this rectangular block so we have this cube here and this cube is written as x2 prime x3 prime x4 prime and for the prime implicant that we denoted b I will now make my second shortcut here so I will not explicitly write our cube function I will just immediately write our prime implicant as in this case x1 prime x3 prime x4 prime 
and then continuing our C prime implicant is written as x1 prime x2 x3 prime the prime implicant denoted D is written as x2 x3 prime x4 and E is written as x1 x4 and F is here written as x1 x2 prime and now when we have all our prime implicants we need to see which of our prime implicants are also essential that is which implicant is unique in covering one of the ones in our function and we can see that the a prime implicant is not essential because the one that we have here is covered by two blocks and the one that we have here is also covered by two blocks the b prime implicant is similarly not essential because both this one and this one are covered by more than one block for the d for the c prime implicant it is the same case we have at least one block for both of the ones that is covered by the c prime implicant and similarly for the d prime implicant on the other hand for the prime implicant that we call e e is the only prime implicant or block that covers this one over here so e is here essential and for f this is also essential because this one over here is only covered by the prime implicant denoted f so this is also essential so our minimal function here must be written as e or f and then we also need as few implicants as possible to cover the remaining ones and this can be done for example using the prime implicants a and c but we could also do this using the prime implicants here that we call b or d and we could also use do this using b or c so all these three expressions here would give us a minimal function sometimes it is very easy to see which prime implicants you need in order to get the minimal function but sometimes it can be a little bit more difficult and then we need a more structured way of finding exactly which prime implicants we're going to use